thank you for your breath in our lungs, God. God, your word says that if the rock, or if, if we don't cry out to you, the rocks will. God, you are so worthy of being praised. God, help us remember, God, to keep your breath in our lungs always, to praise you always, to keep your name on our lips always. Lord, bless this day. Give us a great word from you, God. Let us remember this spirit, God. Let us sit in this spirit, God, this morning. God, in your spirit, God. Continue to resonate with us. God, we love you. Amen. You guys can be seated. Are you excited to be here today? Yeah? Good. I'm excited to be here today. Sunday is like the best day of the week for me. I love coming to church. I love being here with you guys. Um, and I love getting refueled, right, for the rest of our week. So we have been talking about James in our Wednesday night group. Raise your hand if you've come to Wednesday night. Anybody been here? Okay, like six of you, great. The rest of you, I expect you Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, right? So that we can have a lot of woos next week. See? You see what I'm saying? Next week it's going to be really exciting. Everyone's going to be here. And so everyone's going to go, woo! here, right? Okay, so Wednesday night, you're coming. So we have been talking about James, and we've been talking about how sometimes God lets things happen till you get to your boiling point, right? Anybody know that feeling? No, I'm the only one. Okay. The boiling point, right? So the diamonds don't come until the pressure, right? And we were talking about tie-dyes and the tie-dye, um, the old school tie-dye. How many of you are old enough to know, like, before these little fabric things that you can just, like, paint, right? Our kids, I, I say our kids like I have them, but our, just this generation, they don't get to do the old school boiling the dye, you know, on the stove. And, but when you take this white canvas, this beautiful white T-shirt, right, and you put it in the boiling water with all this crazy dye, you get something unique, you get something different, and you wouldn't get it if you didn't have to boil the water, right? So sometimes you're going to get to boiling point. Sometimes you're going to feel like you don't know how to keep going, and you can because God is making something unique out of you. Sometimes he allows things to happen so that you can be a better you. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, right? See, but we don't have to go at it alone. We have Christ, and it's amazing. So this is our verse for this morning. Um, I'm sure Pastor Chad will give us lots of nuggets of wisdom, but I'm going to give us one right now before we take up our offering. It's in Romans 12. It says, starting in verse 1, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. See, God says you can test him, and he's going to show up. And sometimes you can test him through those boiling points, and he's still going to show up because God will never return void. God will always be there for you. God is faithful. So as we give to him, let's pray and let's thank him for that, right? Thank him for those pressures. So we are officially live. Hello, everybody live, right? Yeah, let's give him a hand clap. I'm excited for all of those people. We have an option to text to give. I'll let them put that on the screen because I can't remember the number. So hopefully it'll go up there. Um, if not, it's in your little offering envelope. So you can even text to give. Um, welcome all of our new guests here in the auditorium, but also live. We're excited that you guys are joining us. Um, there's a connect card in the back of every seat. If you guys want to fill one of those out, we'd love to get to know you. We'd love to pray for you um, and help with anything that you guys might need online as well. You can just comment anything that you need. We're here for you. We're going to pray for you. Ashley, right? She did a great job today singing that song, right? I love that song. So Ashley's going to be live on Facebook um, today. So everybody that's catching us live, you're going to get to hang out with Ashley. It's going to be great. We're going to have a good time. So let's pray. God, thank you for who you are. God, thank you for your abounding love, God. That even when we mess up, God, even when we get to our boiling point, God, that you will never leave us or forsake us. God, that you will make us a complete and new and unique person, God, for you. God, we thank you for everything you do for us. God, I pray that these gifts that we give today, God, that they go back to bless your kingdom. 
God, that everything we give, we give back to you, God, because we can never repay you for the gift of your son. We can never repay you for your endless grace and mercy and peace that you give us. God, give us some nuggets of wisdom today, God. Grow us. Make us a better us. God, we love you and we praise you. Amen. God, a big hand. Come on now. All of those watching us on Facebook, you are so blessed because you get to see this in high def if you have a smartphone that does that. Um, all of you that are here, you're blessed. Share this with your friends and neighbors and those that you don't really like. It's okay. We like them all. Um, this is our second week talking about um, getting into rhythm with allowing God's light to shine in you um, and through you. We've been talking about going unashamed. What's the next one? Grow. How do we grow without limits? Oh my God, have mercy. Well, do we have a live studio audience here today? Let me hear you one more time. Everybody clap and breathe. Come on, do this. All right, good. <laughs> For those of you watching, everybody just fell asleep. All right, we're going to do this again. We're going to go. How do we go? Unashamed, unashamed. Very good, very good. All right, I only preach. I'm going to preach the same message again. Y'all don't even remember it. Everybody watching did though. They all loved it. They give me thumbs up and stuff. Margaret Stella, I know she's watching from Las Vegas, Nevada. Pulls herself off of the gambling machines long enough to gamble on a good sermon. I'm kidding. All right, so we grow. How do we grow? Without limits. Good. And then how do we give? unconditionally. Daryl, what's your group doing today? You're all quiet over there. Y'all need coffee, don't you? We are, we are hanging on your every word. I agree with that. If you're, if you're watching, he just said he's hanging on my every word. That is true. Okay, anyway, we, we want to go in our life without the shame of our past, don't we? We want to grow without limits, and we want to give unconditionally. Now, this is the thing. Today, I'm going to talk about, and I need, I need some yes or no's, some yays or nays, hearts and thumbs. It doesn't matter. I'll take them all. No sad faces, though. How many of you have ever prayed for something, and it seemed you were never going to get an answer from God? Give me an amen. amen. Okay, the reason I knew we'd get 100%, because if you've ever prayed, you've always assumed God knew your needs before we made them known, according to Scripture, am I right? So, when we go to pray, immediately, God should go ahead and grant those wishes, I mean those prayers, am I right? We think this, don't we? Now I'm going to be transparent with you all, because this is how I feel. I feel like a lot of times, God, you see me. Do we not all agree that God is an all-seeing eye and he sees us right now? He sees us when we're sleeping. He knows when we're awake. No, that's Satan Claus. No, it's God sees us all the time. I had, I guess it was relative, way distant relative, years and years ago. And he was struggling with a habit of smoking. He smoked them cigarettes. And oh God, did we preach against that. I didn't, but we had people that preached against that. That was worse than anything you could do on the planet. And one day after church, 
he got behind the barn and he lit up a cigarette and he heard this song, There's an All-Seeing Eye Watching You. And he put those ciggies down that day and never picked them up again. Isn't it funny in our life that we look at things, God, you know it, before I even ask it, why don't I get my prayers answered? I talked about this on Wednesday night, how there's, to me, prayer is in thirds. How do we get God to react to us? Well, the thing is, the moment we get on our knees and we humble ourselves, God does begin to react. It's what our actions are after there. And we start off with, the first thing we do is we want to know, God, why is this happening to me? Has anybody ever said that to God? Say, yeah, huh, huh. Why is this happening to me? Why did my kid get sick? Why did this happen to me? Biggest question ever asked by me, by, by someone to me. Why is all this happening? Why is this happening against my family again? Why is my marriage a wreck? You know you know the answer to the why. Now, sickness, we don't understand. Why do things happen to little small children? Why do, We don't understand that we are not God. But our prayer always begins with questioning God, doesn't it? When we first get into the middle of a test or a trial or some kind of resistance, the first thing we do is we go to the why God. Why, God? Why did this happen to me? Why am I going through this? Why am I all alone? Why do you hate me? These are things that I've said to God, so I can say that. And the next phase we do is we get under condemnation for asking God why, don't we? We beat ourselves up. Man, God, why did I even doubt you? Oh, God, I'm a sinner. I don't even have faith the size of the grain of a mustard seed. God, I'm worthless <laughs> human flesh. <laughs> And we do that one. Has anybody ever done that one? I, I keep doubting you, God. No wonder you don't hear me. I'm worse than the children of Israel. I'm constantly going in circles. Oh, God, why is, woe is me? Do you, anybody know what I'm talking about? Say amen. And then the final phase of a prayer, getting a breakthrough, is we transition into God's word and quoting God's word. And that's the part that we have to get to first. This morning, we're going to tell you the three ways that you're going to get your prayers answered 100% of the time, every time. Does that sound good? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is why I come to church. This is why. And I'm going to tell you, all three of them are not easy. Oh, there's always a catch. There is nothing easy because we're not God. God is perfect. God is patient. God is love. Are, all, are we all three of those things at the same time ever? God have mercy. I'm like, you know what? It is a crapshoot. Just getting any prayer answered. Like, God, wake me up tomorrow morning because I am a sinner saved by what? Grace. That's the X factor. Everybody say Grace. In your own strength, you're never going to do anything for God. It's hard enough to put angry birds down. For those of you that are addicted to that game. It's hard enough for you to put social media down. Mm, that's the big one. That's the new telephone. It's hard enough to put negativity down. It's hard enough for some, not in this room, but to put their opinions to the side. God. <laughs> You know the old saying, opinions are like armpits. We've all got them, and we all stink. It all stinks, man. But the grace, say grace. That's the thing. In a few weeks, we're going to celebrate Easter. We're going to celebrate grace coming to this earth. Today, though, if you go with me to Joshua, I love this. Joshua chapter 6. We've heard this story a hundred times, but there are three points that I want to bring out to you today that you're going to see your prayers being answered. Now... Are they going to be answered faster? No. That's the thing. I do not have a quick fix. But I do have an understanding of what God and how God moves and how God works. There can be peace in the pressure. There should not be, if, you're in a, if you are in a spiritual battle today, you should not have on top of that chaos and ruin hitting your life. You should not live in, in all of it. If you are being, there's one thing to be pressured by a test. 
But you should have perfect peace and be able to sleep like the lion of the land. You should be able to rest at night knowing it's in God's hands. If today you're not resting in the pressure, you've not gotten to the place of peace yet in your life. When you get to that place and it's not about you, not about your timing, not about how long this trial, trial or test is going to go, but it is just my life is a sacrifice unto God. Let me tell you what, you're going to start seeing breakthroughs in your life. And where there is peace, there will be a harvest. In the middle of the storm, Jesus over 2,000 years ago, he walked up. Everybody was freaking out. He walked to the edge of the boat, put his arms up, and he said, peace, be still. In the middle of your storm, in the middle of your test, God says, there will be peace. Amen? We do not have to settle for pressure, chaos, anger. We don't have to settle for all those things. But everyone in this room, you will be tested and you will be tried. You will be put through the pressure cooker. But it's in those seasons and in those places, there will be rest. How do you have that? Knowing God. God will not leave you. God will not forsake you. Fact, Google it. Look it up. Google even says it. I'm telling you, look it up. The Bible says that God will never leave you or forsake you, even in the middle of a storm. My God, I wish somebody had told this to me 21 years ago. There are storms you know that I'm fighting now that I fought for 21 plus years. And I'm seemingly wondering, when will it ever end? And I'm learning more and more as I grow in Christ. Listen, I never, you never stop growing. But you do not have to have anger, bitterness, resentment, strife in the middle of a test. In the middle of a season where God is pressuring you. When God is allowing things to leave your life, you should have the peace of God. Amen? We don't have to live a life completely abnormal and upside down and topsy-turvy. We live in a turbulent time as it is, but we can have peace during this. I'm going to tell you today, God has a word, two words for you, peace and grace. Peace and grace. Peace and grace. Somebody in this room is walking out of here with the peace that passeth all understanding. And someone is walking out of this room in the grace of knowing that God is God. And God heard your prayer the first time you began to pray. The first time you cried. The first time you got down on your face. The first time you wrung your hands. The first time you wrote a list. God says his grace is sufficient. Amen? Hallelujah. My God, this is such good preaching. I may go out there and sit and watch. You know that? Whew, Lord have mercy. Joshua chapter number 6. Mm. Verse number 1. Now Jericho. Everybody say, now Jericho. Shut up. No, say that. That's in the Bible. Say, now Jericho. <laughs> Don't think I told you to shut up. All right. Take a breath, guys. Say, now Jericho. Shut up. That's powerful. We all have a Jericho. And it's time for Jericho to shut up. That's good. We're going to go somewhere today. Stephen Furtick's anointing is in this house. It's time for Jericho's of our life to shut up. You have something you're praying about, something that's irritating you, something you're questioning God. It's time for that to stop talking in your head. And it's time for you to stop living in dread. And it's time for you to wake up and tell that thing to shut its mouth. Can I get an amen? amen. The Bible said those walls of that city were so big the chariots raced on top. Walls had no problem. The walls were strong. The walls in your life know where they are. They wake you up every single night at 3 or 4 in the morning. They cause you during midday when everybody else is laughing, all of a sudden some blanket of depression or, or irritability begins to put its wall up. And God said to you today, it's time for you to tell that Jericho to shut up now. God wants to completely deliver his people. That these walls that come, every one of us has a wall. Some people cannot follow through with things. They go so far and they cannot follow through. Why? 
Jericho rears his head. Let me tell you what, when Jericho gets flattened, it cannot rebuild itself. Because when God destroys that demon in your life, when God destroys that anxiety in your life, when God destroys that pressure in your life, it is finished. Amen? Hallelujah. That is better preaching than y'all are amen today. Now Jericho. Say it again. I love that. Say, now Jericho. Shut up. We don't say the S word. You better start saying the S word because the S word keeps talking to us and shutting the church up. It's time for us to get bold enough in who we are. It's time for us to tell these things silence. You're not ringing your voice in my head anymore. You're not ringing my Facebook page anymore. You're not ringing my anxiety. You're not feeding my fear. I am blessed. I am anointed. I can lose weight. I can be on time. I can tithe. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can date. I can marry. I can't divorce. I can love. I can live. I can prosper. I can do all of these things in Jesus' name. And everything that says I can't, shut your mouth in Jesus' name. Now Jericho was shut up, inside and out. Everybody say, because. God, this is going to be so good. Lord, have mercy. I should be preaching this in Shakota, Faith Temple. Oh, my God. Y'all better amen me today. Somebody may even stand up and clap because this is going to be good. Okay, now we're going to start. We may not get past verse number one, and I can preach it again next week because some of you didn't remember what I preached about last week. Anyway, now Jericho was shut up. Inside and out. Everybody say, inside and out. out. You ever known people that completely shut down? They used to do things for God. They used to be on fire for God. I'm talking to church people today. Used to do things for God. Used to be a volunteer. Used to serve. Used to sow. Used to do all of these things. But they've been shut down on the inside and out by the walls of Jericho. None comes in. No blessings go out. No blessings go in, no blessings go out. One wall after another wall after another wall. The Bible says that Jericho was completely shut down because of who? Israel. Everybody say Israel. Israel shut that city down. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I want you to think about this morning that one thing that you feel like gets shut down. That promotion, those jobs, those opportunities, and it seems like it's just getting shut down. And then you can't get a blessing in, you can't get a blessing out. I want you, when you leave this place today, tell that thing to shut its mouth. You will be silent, and I will walk on your corpse. I will be blessed, and I will walk free because I am a child of the Most High God. Amen. What if we began to declare what we believe God's word says instead of what we see, smell, touch, or feel? You know what God does not care about today? How you feel. He does not care how you feel. Well, I feel sad today. He does not live sad. God does not live depressed. God does not live angry. But God lives in a place of peace. God lives in a place of blessing. God says, everywhere you walk is yours. I have given to you. Why are you living like this when I have given you all of my blessings and glory? Jericho was shut down inside and out because children of Israel, none went out and none came in. Number one, what are people? You want to see God move in your life. You want to see God move in your life. If you're here, you're watching today. I want you to write this down. What are people doing? What are people doing because of you? Not what are they saying, what are they doing because of you? What is your impact on humanity? What is it that your people are saying, people are doing because of you? Verse number two. The Lord said to Joshua, mm, that's good water. See, I have given you the place I told you to shut down. God has already given you the victory of whatever you're praying about this morning. This is the problem. We get stuck looking at that wall, don't we? We get stuck looking at a wall, though, over there hanging on the wall. And we get stuck looking how big that is and how long we've had it. And we get to, you know what happens? It becomes part of our DNA, our sex addiction, 
Our addiction to drugs, our addiction to things in this life, our addiction to negativity, big one. Our addiction to woe is me, no one can do anything. I'm the only one out here. Those lies, I'm the only Christian, I'm the only one that's lonely, I'm the only one that's happy, I'm the only one that's sad. We're on emotional roller coasters all the time. And it's time for us to stand on that thing. And we look at it, we look at it, we look at it, we look at it, we look at it over and over and over. And it becomes impossible. So we live with it. We learn to live with our pain. We learn to live in the pressure instead of walking in the promises of God. Jericho was completely shut up. Israel hadn't done anything yet but be God's people. Can you imagine this morning, 2017, what if Go Church began to be the people of God? What if you walked out of here and became the woman or the man of God? What if you on Facebook began to do what God would have you do? Let me tell you what, you would change the world for Jesus. If we, who are called by his name, would humble and seek his face, Jericho, was shut up. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I've given you Jericho into your hand. With its king and mighty men of valor, you shall march around the city. All the men of war going around the city once, thus shall you do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow their trumpets. Verse number eight. And just as Joshua had commanded the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns, before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpets with the ark of the covenant of the Lord following them. The armed men were walking before the priests who were blowing the trumpets, and the rear of the guard was walking after the ark, while the trumpets blew continually. So listen to this, we're coming up on point number two, here we go. But Joshua commanded the people, he said this, you shall not shout or make your voice heard until the day I tell you to shout, and then you shout. You want to see God do things in your lives? Well, I want to see God do things in my life, then it's time for us to shut up. It's time for us to not speak about it anymore. It's time for us not to go there anymore. God told the children of Israel this. You see the city. I've already given it to you. Stop talking about it. I'm going to say that again. We We see the problem. How many of us, we know the problem in our life? We know. Does, Does anyone have to tell you? Nope. I can for free. God said, walk around the thing and look at it, and don't you talk about it. Oh, my God. How many of you, what if I told you for the next seven days, I want you to take your prayers, and I want you to put them, my God, have we done this? Write them down, put them on a piece of paper. Put that piece of paper in an envelope, and I want you to write Jericho on that. And I want you to put it in your living room floor. And I want you to do this. Walk around it. Don't talk about it. Don't talk to it. One day. (laughs) You'll be having cold sweats by day three. (laughs) I want you to do this. This is what I really, I'm telling you, this is what we do. Dude, just get crazy. Helen, we're going to do this. When we get home, we're going to do this. Boys, we're going to do this. This is no joke. I'm going to leave that, you're going to leave that paper on the floor for seven days. You're not going to move it. You're not going to touch it. You're not going to talk about it. When you try to talk about it, mm -mm, pinch yourself. No, I'm not praying about it. I'm not talking about it. I'm not thinking about it. I'm doing nothing about it. Nothing about it. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I want to pick up Jericho and live with it because it's so big and high and mighty. But I'm going to trust in God. I just made that song up, and that is not even copywritten. What if you just got stupid for God? What would you do? You guys, you got it, you got it. And my God, I got, I got a list of prayers. My envelope may be that high. It's going to be one of those yellow industrial strength envelopes, all right? 
So you come, somebody comes to your house and hey, what is that? What's that on for? I don't know, I don't see it. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a piece of paper and here's Jericho. Now, I don't know what you're talking about. It ain't there. <laughs> you, you want me to pick it up? No, we're not picking that thing up. I don't even know. There's nothing to pick up. Carp- we're not picking the carpet up. Day two. Oh, God. Day three. Mum is the word. All he said was do this. He said do this. He said I want you to go and put some horns up. Now that is an annoying sound. I will tell you that right now. I'd move out of Jericho. My alarm clock goes off in three seconds. I'm throwing my phone. And it didn't even make that sound. Oh, God, I'm getting lightheaded. How many times? I've been walking around this thing. Like, you know what? Think about this. If you start making a stupid sound when you think about this, Helen and I have started a new thing. She'll taser me and pretend. Like that. Am I, am I lying? I'm not lying. When I go to talk about, I have, a, I have a, something in the floor that I will not be speaking about. She will taser my head. Do that. What if? You found somebody this week. Text them and say, I'm starting to think about it. About what? You think I'm crazy, but the children of Israel buzzed their way to victory when they shut up because they had already shut the city down because of their faith and belief in God. Just being the children of God, just being called by him, they had already won the battle. Let me tell you this morning, you've already won the battle. You need to shut up and give God praise when he says it's time to praise. I'm not worried about the feet because I've got an annoying sound in my head. I can't hear you, devil. Well, don't you know it's never... No. Well, don't you know you don't have a... Don't you know it's going to get... No, I don't know anything because it's not to be spoken of. It's over. It's finished. Joshua said, go do your job. March once. Every single day. Do you not realize by day number six, they probably knew every square inch of that wall, just like every single one of us in this room. We have looked at the thing, we've talked about the thing, we've analyzed the thing, every one of us have done it. You've put yourself down, you've put yourself through emotional roller coasters. You can't fix it. But God can destroy it. God can flatten that thing in your life and it can never, ever come back again. So they went out. Number two, don't speak about it. Number one, what are people doing because of you? Are you living, before you can even begin to pray, are you living a life of a child of God? You say, yes, pastor, I am. Then stop talking about the walls. Joshua chapter number 6, verse number 15. On the seventh day. Let me tell you what, there will be a time to shout. And if you stop talking about it long enough, you're going to shout so loud your neighbors are going to hear you. You go home this week, this is what's going to happen. You're going to put that envelope in the floor and you're going to write J-E-R-I-C-H-O. You're going to write that on there. You're going to feel that full of these little things that are driving you nuts. Now, spouses, I'm going to warn you. Do not put your spouse in there thinking they're going to crumble at the end of the week. That's not a good thing, all right? So, but what you're going to do is this. You're not going to talk about it. People are going to go, hey, you know about, I, I, I'm praying with you about that situation. And I want you to do this. Say, I, what are you talking about? Well, We know. We know this situation. You're way overweight, and we're praying for it, whatever it is. "Mm -mm." Oh, you're in denial. "Mm -mm." I'm in shutting my mouth mode, and so should you. God bless you. Hallelujah. 
Because let me tell you what, people will that you think are going to bring you up, oh, so fast, can bring you down into the biggest ditch of your life. I'm helping you. Come on, let's talk about it. Let's talk about how bad they, oh, that bad. Poor thing. I'm telling you what, I, I, I say this. There are days that I'll walk in here and I'll say, all right, it's my day to be in a bad mood. You all can't. I'm going to be ticked off today. And if anybody gets in the boat with me, I'm throwing you out. I will throw you out and I'll hit you with an oar on the way out. It's my day to be a bad boy. All right, that's it. This is a week, though. Nobody's going to be a bad boy. Nobody's going to be a bad girl because we're going to shut up about it. Amen? Say, I'm going to shut up about it because I'm shutting Jericho down. Amen. Hallelujah. God, that's good. All right, here we go. The last thing, this is the funnest part. You got all this just pent up frustration now. You've not talked about it in a week. You're, mm, mm, mm. you're gnawing your tongue, you're gnawing your lips. You're like, mm, I mean, even mm, all week long. All week, the children of Israel are like, oh, we can't talk about it. I want to talk about it so bad. I want to say those walls are big. I want to say that really bad. You know they had to be thinking about this. God is saying, look at it, 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 look at it until you're sick to death of looking at it. And then you're going to do something that is crazy. In chapter number 6, verse number 15. On the seventh day, they rose early at the dawn of the day. Can you imagine this day? Oh, my God. This is the day you're never going to look at the walls again. This is the day. Listen, at the end of these seven days, you may not physically see the miracles, but you are going to have the peace that Satan keeps driving out of you. You're going to get it back in Jesus' name. It rose early in the morning and marched around the city in the same manner seven times this time. Oh God, that's a lot of times. I would say, I volunteer for the chariot. I'll take a chariot. It was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. And at the seventh time, when the priests blew the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, shout. Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The Bible says they went around that wall seven times on the seventh day. And they stopped in their tracks. Something happened. They could do something they've been waiting to do for seven days. That's it. But can you imagine every one of us that have woken up to that same stinking wall every day of our life? What if we said, no! I am free! No more torment! No more questioning God! Let me tell you what, if you're praying for someone that is lost and it's irritated you so bad and you just want to scream, God says to shout a shout of victory. If you've been praying and believing God for opportunities for blessings, God says shout the shout of victory. But it's not until you stop worrying about it. It's not until you give it to God. And it may take time. It took them seven days. And going around that thing a lot of times. But then God says, you wait, you wait for it, it's time to shout. Let me tell you what, we talk about it, it's time to talk to it. It's time to praise God all the way through it. You're believing God to restore your home, you're believing God to restore your family, you need to shut up about it for seven days, completely pipe down about it. We come back here next Sunday morning, we should come in here lifting our hands, lifting our voices. And say, God, I thank you that you are God and you've taken this pain, you've taken this pressure, and in the middle of where I'm at, God, you have restored and you've brought me to a place of perfect peace. 
my God, to walk in peace, to walk in tranquility, to walk in the presence of God instead of the presence or the pressure of our past or the pressure of our unanswered prayers. What if we knew nothing but the blessings of God? Addictions would be broken. There's a story. Years ago, there was a church. This church was a good church. Had a good deacon board. But they just ran through pastors. They figured it out that a new pastor would come to town and they knew that he would last so long and they would be there encourage him but they just knew they were in a cycle constant cycle going through pastors going through pastors they'd leave and go get promoted somewhere else they'd be a blessing somewhere else and they were a blessing while they were there but it just and every pastor that came in one thing happened every one of them the board would meet them and the board would encourage them and one particular board member would always say listen this is a good church but it's a hard church it's a good church, but it's a hard church. And even inevitably, every pastor would leave that church because it was a hard church. Well, a particular board member had his time, and he left the board. Someone else took his spot. A new pastor came to town, and they did the interview process and went through all the things and did all, all the checks and balances, and this guy was a perfect perfect candidate at the end of the conversation at the end of the at the end of the process they said listen we just want you to know this is a good church and the pastor thanked them and he walked out the church began to grow the church began to explode they began to have amazing salvations baptisms things begin to happen like they never imagined i mean god was doing it god was doing things god was moving they were in a building project and one day they asked they said what happened what was different about this guy than all the other guys he was just as good qualified just as good and one of the deacons on the board said listen when we voted that guy off we just told this pastor this was a good church he didn't know it was a hard church let me tell you what, we know the walls, we know the Jericho, but it's time for you to stop saying, my life's a good one, but it's a hard one. Boy, my life's great, but I've got some rough times. I've had some bad past. I've had some bad things. Man, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. It's time for you to say, I'm a good person. I love God. I live for God. I've got a good life. I've got good things planned for me. I've got blessings. I've got promises. I've got things that I don't even know about, but I've got good things. Because when you begin to look at your life, God is, it's a good life, but it's a hard life. It's good to be a Christian, but it's hard to stay one. Boy, it's good to have faith, but boy, it's hard to keep it. Why don't you just go, it's good to have faith. It's good to have love. It's good to have peace. It's good to have the blessings. It's good to have the promises because God has got something good for you. And the walls of Jericho are about to be flattened in your life if you just simply Shut up and believe. Amen? Stand to your feet this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, I have a good life. I have a good life. I'm shutting down the walls and I'm shutting down my mouth. And I am free in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord another hand clap. For all those folks that are watching today, Man, we literally hundreds and hundreds of people are watching this church in action every single week. Let me tell you, you have walls. It stinks. But it's time for you to shut them things down. All of our online congregation, well, we love you and we pray for you. And I want you right now, at this point of the day, if you have needs, you have anything, please contact us through Facebook. You can email us at gochurch at mag.com. You can call the church. You can, everything's at gochurch.tv. But Jesus loves you. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. And we're going to pray for those that are online. If you need Jesus, you need to accept Jesus. I want you just to say, Jesus, I love you.
thank you for dying for me. I accept you as my Savior, and I believe, I believe in my heart that you love me, and I confess you now. Every wall, every chain, all brokenness. Father, we just thank those that are watching. And God, you heal them. God, you deliver them and you bring them into a place of rest. And God, as they begin to give in their communities, as they begin to sow online, as they begin to give to you, Lord, we thank you. You're going to break poverty. You're going to break chains. Father, I thank you. I thank you today that we are free in Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Everybody in this room today, head bowed, eyes closed. You've never accepted Jesus as your Savior. I want you to just lift your hand right now and say, Pastor, pray for me. I want today, how many of you are going to accept the seven-day challenge? Where you're going to write the thing down. You're going to put it in your bedroom floor, your living room floor. You're not touching it now. That's going to be one spot of your carpet. You don't have to uh, vacuum up this week. But you are going to physically march around it. And you are going to say, yeah, yeah, I've done everything else. I've talked about it, hit it from every angle. I want you to lift up your hand right now. Depression is going to go. Some of you, depression is leaving you. It is going to be gone. Anxiety is going to leave you. Addiction is going to be a thing of the way, 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 way past. Temptation is going to shut up in your ear. And you're like, yeah, 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 this is going to be it. I want everybody in this place today. I want you to lift up your hands. Jesus. Father, we're not going to be tormented any longer. We're not going to doubt that you hear our prayers. But God, I thank you in the name of Jesus that every wall, every wall, God, those that are sick in their bodies right now, I thank you by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. God, I thank you there is power. There is blood that cure, cures all forms of sickness or disease. And that is through the stripes of Jesus. God, I just thank you. This is not going to be ever like last time. But God, we are going to have the faith. We're not going to fear that you're not going to hear our prayers. But God, we thank you today. We thank you today. That thing right now, you're thinking about it. Right now, you're thinking about it. You're going to say, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. You're not in my head anymore. You're not in my heart anymore. And I'm not going to talk about you. This is it. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. And in seven days, I'm going to give a shout because I'm going to know that my God is my God. Church, give God a shout of praise today. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, worship the Lord.